This new Goodman uh, 18 Sear high efficiency heat pump system is, has been working good for the past uh, nine months or so. But it does have a, a little bit of an issue, and that is when the weather gets really cold, um, sometimes on occasion um, it'll uh, throw a locked rotor code on the thermostat. And you have to come out here and uh, cycle the breaker to uh, reset the computer. And it'll run and run and run all day long and then randomly just get a locked rotor event again. you got to come out of here and cycle the breaker. So that's getting very annoying. Uh, nothing wrong with the compressor. A, this unit's brand new. I think what it is is just uh, got high pressures inside. So the motor doesn't have enough torque to uh, overcome that. And uh, that's actually a known issue um, with these units and probably others. And I've highlighted the uh, section of the TSB that uh, uh, is relevant. And it said, uh, should a Goodman product be installed on an expansion valve and or coil in which the uh, pressures don't equalize within two minutes, a supplemental star kit may be required. So. Um, that, according to, along with this, leads me to believe I think a start kit's going to solve my problem. And uh, you can get these start kits on the internet for about $50. I got this actually for a little bit less than $50. And uh, you want the uh, three-wire kind. Three-wire kind is a, is a little bit better because it has an actual mechanical relay in here versus the uh, thermistor type. If you've got a really hard-to-start system, say your system is really old like the other one over there, and it takes a long time to start, the thermistors might heat up and break the circuit before the capacitor has a chance to really do its job. So uh, the three wire is definitely the uh, better way to go. This is a high efficiency system, so this uh, the control system is a little bit uh, unique compared to your traditional systems. And um, before you get started, as I have it opened up right here, you want to make sure that your disconnect is off, which it is. And of course, measure your voltage on your line and on the capacitor. <clears throat> Nine times out of ten, the capacitor will discharge through the wattings on the compressor. But uh, you always want to check across here just in case. This is a communicating system, so really all it needs is two wires to uh, perform all the functions. And of course the uh, auxiliary power supply coming from this transformer here. Uh, so there really is no traditional contactor or contactor in the traditional sense. That's actually here. This is a zero crossing relay. So this relay energizes as soon as the AC sine wave is at or near zero to minimize arcing so they can get away with a lot smaller size and uh, Goodman has, has left uh, several dimples in strategic locations in order to mount various accessories two dimples were up here that took advantage of to mount the auxiliary transformer so basically what you have to do is uh, kind of play around with this hard to do with one hand and just sort of uh, come up with a good mounting location. I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount it here, kind of rest it right there and then strap it down with the tie wrap that's included in the kit and you want to make sure the capacitor is mounted vertically and then I'll probably end up mounting the, uh, the relay right here and that dimple. So the kit's going to look something like this. And as you notice, this capacitor has a bleeder resistor across it, and that's because once the uh, compressor gets up to speed, this relay cuts this thing out, takes it out of the circuit. And so, uh, unlike the run capacitor, there's nothing to, uh, there's no resistance to uh, bleed off the uh, energy in the cap. This right here is the uh, like a blow-off valve. If the thing, this capacitor gets too hot, the valve should pop off and the dielectric uh, leak out instead of exploding. But I have seen these things explode before too, so especially when they're old, so I'm not really sure how good that valve is. 
Um, and basically all we're doing is essentially is we're just placing this capacitor across the run capacitor already inside the unit and we're switching it in and out by the automatic relay and this capacitor is 189 to 227 microfarad and you can't see on the run cap but I think this is around 40 microfarad so when you put two capacitors in parallel the capacitance is add so basically what you're doing is you're just increasing the capacitance temporarily of what's already in the unit and then cutting it out with the relay. And these capacitors are not really so much about energy storage as they are phase shift. Truthfully, 189 microfarad is not really that large of a capacitance. When you talk about these uh, induction motors, the whole idea is to get a rotating magnetic field. And since you've only got one phase, what you got to do is trick it and cause a phase shift by using capacitors where the, uh, I believe the current will lag the voltage. And so what the idea of this star capacitor is, is that you're going to end up causing a greater phase shift than what you have here as standard, thereby causing more torque on the compressor and hopefully overcoming the uh, locked rotor condition. The, the kit comes with uh, complete instructions on how to wire everything up, everything you need to know. And I've got uh, some extra little uh, adapters that I can use to, um, you've already, you already see one right here, that, that way I can uh, multiply the number of terminals I have available to me on the uh, capacitor. I seem to be running out mainly because of this auxiliary transformer set up here. So um, let me go ahead and take my drill and uh, drill a pilot hole here. And then we'll, we'll get the thing mounted. This thing comes with a, uh, a nylon strap that you can screw in. And then a couple of uh, soft tapping uh, sheet metal screws. So let me get it mounted mechanically, and then we'll go ahead and uh, hook it up electrically. Okay, that worked out really well. Everything's all mounted up, and I went ahead and connected everything electrically. This arrangement worked out really well here, letting the capacitor rest on the uh, mounting plate for the uh, circuit board. Keeps it away from the circuit board, but also has a uh, nice solid mounting arrangement, and that nylon strap's not going to let it go anywhere. I've got the uh, ratings facing outward, so I don't have to. I could just easily look at it and see what it is when this eventually fails. Got the terminals facing up, and the uh, relay mounted really nice. That was a good location for it. And um, when Goodman designed this, there's actually a terminal labeled down here called, if I can find it start relay. So this system was designed to have this optional start relay installed. So that basically is going to be where your black lead goes for the uh, start assist. And then basically the rest of it goes across your capacitor. So your yellow lead with the stripes goes across the terminal labeled HERM, short for Hermetic. That means the uh, hermetically sealed compressor inside. And then the uh, red terminal right here goes to um, C for common, the other common. So basically black and red are going across here. However, the black one is switched with the uh, contactor. And then your yellow one is going across the, uh, the run side of the capacitor. You'll notice that this unit does have a um, dual capacitor. This lead here is for the fan. They use these capacitors in many units, and this particular unit, the high efficiency one, has a uh, ECM fan motor, or uh, electrically commutated motor. So it's all controlled electronically by the uh, circuit board here. So they really could have gotten away with a single capacitor, but it's cheaper just to get these in bulk and use the same ones. It's not really that big a deal. They'll use the same compressors in these, but they'll uh, use different condenser motors sometimes, condenser fan motors. So that's uh, 
basically how it looks. I didn't have to cut any wires. I did have to uh, use another terminal adapter as you can see here. You can get these at a regular auto parts store. That's the part number. Basically it takes one spade connector and makes them into two. And this is a little bit busy right here, and there's really no getting around it. There's no way to avoid it. You got power for your uh, auxiliary 24 volt control transformer. You've got uh, power for your uh, crankcase heater, um, and uh, as well as the uh, common hookup from your line side. So this is a, uh, a busy connection over here. The other two really aren't so bad. And um, I like using these because they're, you can take them back off if you need to replace the capacitor. And you don't have to cut any wiring and use wire nuts and all that kind of nonsense. They just hook in exactly as they're supposed to go. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put the cover on here and energize it. And we'll see how this thing starts up in just a second. Once I turn the uh, power on, uh, the computer is going to have to communicate with the stat inside takes about maybe five minutes and then the unit will be ready to uh, fire up again. Okay, now that everything is put back together and uh, heat pump is energized, we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can fire this thing up. This is the uh, remote control to it. I got the uh, entire system over the internet and I saved so much money I was able to get all the options, got all the candy with it. So in just a few minutes here this thing should fire up. Very quick start. Also very quiet. Compressor didn't seem to labor at all. I'd say that started up about maybe twice as fast as what it used to. And now the house is going to be uh, nice and toasty at 74. 48 degrees outside, apparently. So that, that went really well. Uh, that's a, a good $47 I spent. So this is the actual part number. If you have a 3-ton unit, you want the CSRU2. You could get the uh, CSRU-1, uh, the, the paperwork recommends either one, but in situations like that where you've got two different part numbers for the same unit, I'd rather go with the uh, beefier part. All it really means is you're just putting in a larger capacitor, the relay is all the same. This is a, uh, a three-ton unit, DSZC18036 model. So they're just a piece of cake to put in. You saw how easy it was to put it in, <coughs> to put in. Comes complete with instructions. The whole job took about maybe uh, about 20 minutes. And hopefully, this is going to address my uh, locked rotor issue I've been getting intermittently over the past few weeks. <laughs>